Um, so you're counting time by counting pages. I mean, is it 17 minutes with the songs? Songs are long. Oh, songs no, long. I didn't think about that. No. Oh, there you go. Okay, great. Oh, so you count okay. the songs and you got, you, got, you got it up to time, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we got rid of that problem. So now you're gonna to now. How do we do? How do we polish it uh, and prep it for handing it in? Right, that's the question. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna call on the services of your future self. Bum, ba, da, that means the the you that is going to be reading the script tomorrow. Ba, da, ba, da, ba, da. Your future self. She's so smart. She's got so many good and helpful, encouraging ideas. All you have to do is put it away in a nice little folder for like 24 hours. Okay, so you, okay. You, you didn't you didn't work on it today. That's good. Put it in a nice folder. Maybe if you have a little piece of ribbon or something, tie a little ribbon around it. It's a gift. It's a present that you're going okay. to give to your future self, and you're going to <laughs> your future self who possesses amazing powers. She's going to read it, right? And yeah. she's going to help you identify the few things that you need to fix, change, tweak, alter, polish in order to get it ready for the turn it in on uh, next Friday. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The future self. Your future okay. self. Well, right. You have one, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. God, I guess God willing. Yeah. <laughs> well, that well, yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> right? Inshallah, you have a future self and you're going to tie, put it away in a night, you know, put it in a night, make a nice little package. And you can even write a note to your future self. Dear future self, I know that you will, you know, be able to identify everything I need to, to polish and tweak and, you know, change up. There won't be a lot of things, but I know you're going to find every one of them. And you're going to give me some really good notes when I read you. You know, when you read this manuscript, thanks, future self. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Hey, Crystal, this like four days ago, you were like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> what be you? I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I mean, I rewrote this so many times. I don't know how to do it. I mean, I just, I just quit. I mean, it's wonderful. You were like, oh Lord, have mercy. How can we help her? <laughs> now so if you don't you know you know you have a future self because here she is right now saying well i just finished my draft and okay okay so give that a try and uh re reread it tomorrow or if you want on saturday you know but i think tomorrow's good tomorrow because you, you kind of you, you didn't touch it today so tomorrow's good okay 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 yeah all right there you go and just know that you know what needs to be polished and changed you know it. You got this far. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, all right. Up next, we've got Catherine. Go all for right. it. Catherine. Hi. Um, so I have a first draft. Yay. Yeah. And, uh, I'm reading it aloud, and then I'm going to make the cards. Here's my question. When I go in to write the second draft, which will be soon, mm -hmm. do you usually like make a copy of the first draft and then cut and paste and type over it? Or do you usually start with a blank document or what's, what's mm -hmm. your favorite idea? Yeah, um, it depends. It really, it really depends. Um, Catherine, sometimes it's, you know, if you have like, if scene one works just as it is, yeah. unless you want to practice your typing, <laughs> procrastinate you know then I would say don't retype it you know what I mean yeah. I mean I would say you have your document with the date of whatever the date of your draft is right. July 30th let's just say right mm -hmm. and then you you save that and then you open up the document and you save another version as like yeah. the August 1st draft or whatever you want to call it yeah Okay, so yep. but it has everything in it, and you just you can just try keep what works and throw out what Rest. doesn't. Mm -hmm. Great, that's definitely thank okay. you, thank you, thanks, Catherine. Oh, sorry, I clicked to unmute. Don't worry about it. That was a mistake. Um, uh, up next is Nick. Hello, hello. Hey, Nick, how you doing, man? Not bad. 
um, yeah. So yeah, there is just uh, a really interesting opportunity that's just come up kind of out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically it's like you pitch an idea for this application and it has to be like 200 words or less. So I feel good about writing a pitch now because I've got the, I've got the new techniques to go through that. But um, basically I get to write about, I have to do a pitch about an album essentially mm -hmm. and try to put my own spin on it to make it unique. And I've been doing this bracket of like all the albums I want to write and I'm down to two. Mm -hmm. And the problem is there's one that I think I can make a better, more interest, a better case for in terms of like the pitch is stronger. Mm -hmm. But the other one is my favorite album of all time. And I feel like a really strong personal connection to that. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just having a little bit of trouble figuring out which one to go with. Mm -hmm. Any advice? Mm -hmm. Oh boy. So these are albums that, that you have, they're not your albums. They're not albums that you have recorded. No. So they're albums that other people have made that yeah. you are going to write about? Yes. Like a little, like a 3000 word article. What do you, what do you think, Nick? What do you think I'm going to say? I know. Go, I mean, go for love, man. Life is short and shit is stupid you know what i mean but, you know if because you're gonna i mean won't you want to like spend the next however many weeks or whatever like listening over and over to the album that you love yeah love it you know right i mean i would say yeah you know go for love that's good Thank you. <laughs> that's the kind of just push i needed that's yeah oh yeah, yeah, and it, you know, and the worst thing that can happen is you're going to get to listen to your favorite album of all time a lot. Nothing wrong with that, right? So you win. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Nick. Um, all right, up next we got Jacob. Hey, Jacob. Hey, Susan Larry. Hey, man, how you doing? Doing all right. I'm doing all right. Um, so the I'm struggling with. Uh, an, odd, an odd problem, which is basically, I have a script and a sort of piece of it, not sort of the central relationship, but one of the major relationships is the relationship of the main character to uh, the, like the father character. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it, it, this was sort of given to me that this is an important thing and it's important to the producers that I make that work and make it interesting. And I hate it. I just hate all like, like the like that whole sort of genre of like shitty fathers making people work harder so that like that whole sort of like trope drives me up a wall in other people's art and is driving me up a, now it's driving me up a wall. In <laughs> um. And so I'm trying to figure out, and so I think the sort of the bigger question is like how to like, how to, if, how to take something that is both like a trope, but also like a thing. There are people who have fucked up relationships with their parents. That's not like, like that, it, it's not a trope that, it's a trope because it's a thing that is real. It's not a trope because it's totally made up and how to find the like honesty and truth and like worthwhile story in that. Yeah, yeah, there's that, you know, be careful, there's that, be careful what you wish for. And then there's, be careful what you hate on as you will be called to, to make it better. Yeah, you, yeah, so be careful what you hate on lest you will become uh, enmeshed in it. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, I mean, you probably already thought of these things. You want to find the humanity of the characters, you know, you want to go underneath the surface and underneath the surface and underneath the surface again. You maybe want to uh, find the humor, if there is any, you know, um, but yeah, but it, it is tricky. You're right. It's a, it's a trope. It's, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. So you want to 
be as specific as you can about what they're doing in their relationship, you know? Um, and also ask yourself why you don't, why you dislike it so much. Because I think in that answer, there's going to be some juicy stuff that you can perhaps employ, you know? Because, mm -hmm. like, as tropes go, like, I don't have a problem with that trope. You know what I'm saying? So, so but, but you have a real strong feeling about that. So I'm, I'm curious, you know, ask yourself. And, and from that, maybe you'll, you'll find some, some things um, to, uh, yeah. Does that make sense? I mean, yeah, it's, it's tricky. It's not easy. It's not easy. But there you go. You're a pro now, brother. So, ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jacob. Um, all right. Up next, we've got Adi. Are you there? Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Great. Hey, Adi. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Good. Good, thank you. Um, so I, I had a question about um, taking notes during a talk back. I had a reading yesterday virtually and um, got tons of notes, really constructive feedback. And what I struggled with was how to take the notes in a way that was, um, you know, in a way that I could sort of go back to and, uh, you know, it, it, in sort of the most efficient way um, while also being, uh, yeah, Oaxaca, while also being sort of present with with um, the people who are giving me feedback, like wanting to make that connection, saying thank you and appreciating what they were doing. And I just felt like I was, you know, typing up notes really quickly, sort of, you know, as my own secretary and then, uh, and then, you know, unmuting to say thank you. And, and, and it just felt really sloppy. And I was just wondering if you had any advice on that. Oh, that's interesting. You were typing. Yeah, I use, you know, this. Na, 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 na. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, it's old school. But it, it's really effective. You were on a Zoom call, I'm guessing. Or yeah, something. I was on a Zoom call, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. look, you're like, I'm writing shit down right now. Yeah. And I'm talking to you and I'm saying hi and all this kind of stuff. So right. it's a very, it's a different, you know, if I'm, you know, typing like this, sure. it's a very sure. kind of different thing. Um, uh, you can always convene another Zoom call just to say thank you and to mm. talk to them and be social and, and tell them how much you appreciated their notes and all that, you know? Yeah. You can do that on the on the back end is always fine and good. Um, you can call each one of them individually also if you don't want to do a whole Zoom call thing, you know. Sure, sure. But in the future, it, it's very helpful for me if you're taking your own notes. And I suggest this even if you have somebody on the team whose job it is to take the notes. I have a lot of jobs where people take notes for me. Mm -hmm. but I, in addition to their notes, I take my own notes. Yeah. Um, so, so it's always good to take your own notes. Um, and I suggest just writing them down by hand off, you know, off camera somewhere. Right. Right. Um, you know, cause you're, we're not going to judge your penmanship. <laughs> I have terrible penmanship, but, yeah, but thank you. Go. There you go. <laughs> and then, but I'm glad the notes were good. I'm glad they were helpful to you. Yeah. I mean, I think okay. that it's, it's really tricky to know, you know, what's helpful and then what do you, you know, put aside. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's something that I struggle with as well, like knowing, mm -hmm. you know, what to take in and then what's, what's, you know, good that someone had that reaction, but maybe not so important for the rewrite. Right, right. Yeah. You have to, yeah, let them cool a little bit and then go back and read them with a, a just sort of a, a cooler feeling about them. Yeah. That's, Which that's ones great. still resonate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. Cool. You're welcome, Adi. Thanks, Adi. Um, all right. Up next, we've got Sarah. Hi. Hi. Um, so I, I guess my question is, do you have any tips or tricks for satire? Um, I keep trying and according to the people who are reading, I'm not quite getting there. Uh, but I'm having a hard time getting an answer from them on what to improve because satire is sort of difficult. <laughs> it's, they're like, this does not work. I don't know how to fix it though. And so I was wondering if you oh, asked. Oh Lord. Oh, that sounds just really difficult. I mean, regardless of what you're trying to do, just, oh, this doesn't work. I don't know what to tell you, but it, and I don't know why, but it just doesn't work. Um, so I'm guessing these people are pro 
producers? Have they hired you to write something or what's the deal? No, I'm working on, um, I don't have places for these pieces yet. I'm just uh, having friends who are also writers, uh -huh. but in different genres reading. Right. So uh, this, this particular friend works basically in fiction writing. Right. Um, and right. I sort of sent it to him to read, but. Right. That's but, it. So is it that, I mean, because satire, I mean, are they, <laughs> it's, it's also a cultural thing. I mean, some people don't get like, some people don't get, just aren't on your vibe. I'm like, what is your favorite, you know, what is your favorite piece of satire? Um, what is I, it? this is going to sound dumb, but I really just like Voltaire. Okay. I think he was hilarious. Okay. Um, and my friend is more into the Colbert rapport. Like oh. that is his okay. measure of, of satire. Okay. Um, okay. So see already there, we have a difference in taste. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, because if yeah, I said okay. I'm writing a drama and my friend, I like this kind of writer, this kind of style, and my friend liked another kind of style. Um, it would be I think difficult. he might be onto something. I think he might be onto something that I'm not like hitting a mark, even if I'm aiming for it. Okay. Um, so I was just sort of wondering if, if there was like an attitude I should be having while writing satire that maybe I'm missing out on. Well, I always think it's like snarky, but with a heart. You know, if that makes any kind of sense. I'm thinking of Voltaire. I'm thinking, <laughs> I mean, it's snarky, but with a heart, uh, with a heart, it's because it's, I feel like satirists want to, want to sort of move the culture forward in a way, you know? Um, yeah. I'm thinking of, what, who wrote, is, is, would you say a modest proposal is satire? Does yeah, that, Jonathan Swift. Okay. Okay, Swift, right, that's who it is. Yeah, so so the, the satirist wants to move the, you know, wants to, like, help the culture, right? They're not just mm -hmm. urinating over things, but they got to, right. they're, they're, they're snarky. They're like, they're looking at you like, right, you know? Um, yeah. I didn't think about it that way. I think that's, that's actually very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. And some laughs. You I have some laughs in there? Is it is it funny? It's funny, but I think it's not, like, moving oh and that was that was sort of what i was missing out on okay and the heart also a and the heart attitude, and the heart a lot of attitude a lot of attitude and a lot of heart yeah no that's how okay. thank you you were more helpful in like five minutes than oh. two hours on the phone it's okay it's okay but remember they love you in a way that i don't even know you so friends that's, are my that's goal. You. you know what i'm saying yeah yeah thank you <laughs> thank you thanks sarah um, all right, so we've got about 13 minutes left and we actually don't have a question at the moment. And my neck really hurts today. So I super, oh, Rachel, though, we got to go to Rachel. What happened? Yeah, but first we have to talk about your neck. Hold on. What's the I got it. I think I tweaked it. I got to do some good yoga for it because I think I just tweaked it, you know, and also this, you know. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. You, do you more got standing up. Because we need you. Yeah, standing up. Or, oh. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Rachel. Rachel's got a question. Rachel's real serious here. She got a question. Phone. Are you there? Hi. How Hi, are Rachel. you? Hey, good to see you. Good to see you too. I, I wanted to ask right now I'm working on a personal statement and I have a lot of it's it, it's longer than it needs to be, but I love everything about it and I want to be able to stay true to what I've written, but also while knowing that I do have to condense it to fit a word count. So I wanted to know if you had any advice for trimming, but like still keeping the essence of like what you've written. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love my magic scissors. I love my magic scissors. Um, you know, there are all these phrases like kill your darlings and take out your magic scissors and um, know that whatever you trim will um, grow somewhere else. So it's not like you're throwing it away forever, okay? Um, you can have a, a document that says, you know, outtakes from this personal statement, but know that it's okay to cut things and it's actually going to make it stronger. So come at it with that attitude. Okay. With that, if you frame it that way, then it might make it easier to trim things. Okay. How many words away are you? A thousand, a hundred. <laughs> I mean, what do you got? Uh oh, you're muted. 
One sec, so sorry. It's, it's gonna, okay. It's okay. Say Rachel, there you go. How, how many how many words do you have to cut about? So I have to cut about 500 words. Okay. So uh, when's the last time you looked at the document? 20 minutes ago. Okay, great. Okay, good. So when's it due? Oh, I have time. It's not oh. a, it's not a worry. Oh, fine. Okay, great. So, you know, tomorrow, you know, take a look at it. Read it out loud. Have you read it out loud yet? I've not. No. Great. Re stand up, read it out loud, perform it as if you're performing it to a gathered audience of the people that you're going to present, you know, send it to, right? Anywhere where you bump, you know what I'm talking about, Rachel? Anywhere where you're, you feel like, oh, I'm getting kind of long winded. I could have said that shorter, or, you know, more concisely. Or eh, that's a tangent. It's really interesting, but it's kind of a tangent. You'll start to feel it in your body. Read it out loud to yourself. Okay. Then Thank I'm you. not going to tell you to clean your bathroom, but, <laughs> you know, take some time away from it and maybe read it, read it twice at least two times tomorrow out loud as if you're pitching your document you know presenting your document to the folks you want to send it to and you can start to feel where it drags a little bit where it bumps where it's a little too wordy okay that's great thank you okay you're welcome thanks rachel oh um we got nine minutes left and we're going to go to mary mary hi Hey, Mary. Hi. Um, all right. So I don't quite know what my question is, but we shall discover it. And okay. discovery is part of what I'm about to convey. So I think it, the, the essence has to do a, a couple of weeks ago, I asked about, um, I was feeling stuck. I was just feeling stuck in my process in terms of moving my play forward. I'd say I'm two thirds, not based upon pages or time, but just the, the story. That's sort of what it feels like. Um, but I, I was feeling a little stuck. And so I made an outline of what I had already. And then I just started putting on, you know, putting more actions in places where I could go and just brainstorming um, as a way to generate. Um, and I've been doing some other things as a way to disrupt the stuckness, right? So um, to backtrack a little bit, I am not an outliner. This, um, so it was, I can outline things that, it, that exist, but because this play was born out of sort of discovery writing and um, writing and then rereading it and going, oh, oh, there's this and this here and writing more of it and then sort of forming it and putting it together. I can then go back and outline it, but I didn't start with a complete story in my head. I have, There's like three arcs, two character arcs, the protagonist, secondary character, and then the sort of amorphous uh, sort of system, the environment, right? Um, and I have an image at the end, like as an, I see it, what I want on stage. <laughs> I see the image, I, but I'm not quite sure, oh, how do, I, how do I get there? And how does it resolve? And what I keep asking myself, like what feels satisfying as, as somebody on this journey watching it? What feels satisfying when I'm in the characters? And um, I keep coming to just like, mayhem and celebration, that's what's the satisfying aspect, but I don't know how to get there. And I don't, I think that I've been a, just a bit too cerebral lately, I think like, I need to figure this out. Um, and there's music in there too. And I'm good at coming up with hooks and kind of chord progressions and the beats, the, the groove, as you said the other day. Um, 
And so it's still this, it's almost like, you know, it's emerging through the fog. And some of it is very clear, but some of it's still a little out there. And so, um, and a lot of that process has really, has, has worked for me. I've enjoyed it. Um, it's, um, I have had people read and they're like, yeah, it makes sense. It's coherent, you know? So I'm not like, they've had people have the reactions that I want that I, so I'm like, okay, okay. I'm not, you know, off the deep end, but I'm in this place of, of growth. So I don't know what my question is. Other, you know, I, sometimes when I think about coming here and asking a question, I almost, I answer it like, oh, well, okay, go and try this and do this. So I'm putting it out to the group. I'm putting it out to you, SLP. Um, is there something at this sort of juncture that you're hearing that could be helpful to consider? I, I think you, you said it pretty well, Mary. I think you're in the process. I think you're in the creative process. This is what the creative process is like. You know, this yeah. is one of the ways that it's like for those of us who jump in the creative process every day. Some days it's clear, some days it's, you know, you can write an outline, some days you write songs, some days you read it to your friends and it makes sense and it, you're right in the middle of it. I think the most important thing you can do is to keep showing up and stay in it mm -hmm. um, instead of wondering what people are going to think about it, you know, stay in it, keep showing up, keep putting uh words, images, ideas, thoughts, notions down on paper or however you want to record them mm -hmm. and just keep going forward. I think sometimes when we're in the creative process, we want hard and fast answers, solution, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. but like Dorothy going to Oz, she, if you see the end, she saw Oz, there it is over there. She didn't know how, ooh, what, I got to go. Okay, I got to follow the yellow brick road. She had a yellow brick road, you know? Mm -hmm. You don't sound like you have a yellow brick road, but you do have things that you can do every day. And the most important thing is to keep showing up. You just have to keep showing up. Okay. That's, that's, all, that's all it is. Just keep putting the time in um, and it will just accumulate. Yeah, I think that I am in that place of, of mm -hmm. I just I want that figured out now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, or comparing it to other aspects of the process that were, mm -hmm. that were different. Mm -hmm. that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, 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 it's a different thing every day. And if you're, you know, you're a creative person, you get accustomed to this thing that is ever changing. But again, the one thing that you can do with regularity is show up. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Um, all right, we've got about two minutes left. Two minutes. And we don't have a question at the moment. Yeah, your neck. I'm thinking about your neck. <laughs> I think I know what I did. Mm, well, I always, I always, I love the, these, these kind of moves and I just uh -huh. go too full force when I haven't done it in a while. Mm -hmm. It's going to all the way around. And I think yeah, I messed you can, up. You can slow oh. that movement down. I will. Thank you. Mike has a question, but thank you for your help with my neck. Go ahead, Mike. Oh, right there. A quick question, stage directions. Uh, yes. Seems like there's two schools of thought. One is that not much directions. That's the art of the director and the actor. They want to figure out what kind of moves to do, what kind of action to do, and that sort of thing. The, uh, there are other uh, writers that write detailed stage directions. What is your view on that? Aha. Great question, Mike. I'd like to put the action in the line. So I, put, I embed the action that I want, that I really want. I embed it in the line. Like, give me your coat. Mm -hmm. Or stop standing on my foot. How dare you? You know, okay. then we, okay? So I'm sneaky like that. Um, and I, 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 I know some writers, you know, work to make their plays, you know, actor proof. I am not controlling in that way. I don't, I don't mind an actor to find things and take liberties as long as they're adhering to the text. 
Okay, great answer. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks, Mike. Uh, we've got about 20 seconds until six o'clock. 20 seconds. <laughs> oh, take a breath. Oh, everybody. What a week. What a week. What a week. Herman Cain died, everybody. Herman Cain passed away from COVID-19 oh. on the day of John Lewis's funeral. So I'm not smiling. I'm really not. I'm just, I'm just, you know, repeating the news. I right, was like, I'm just, I'm just repeating the news, but uh, anyway. Wow. Well, <laughs> it's six o'clock. Six o'clock. God and bless us, everyone. That's right. So uh, we're going to, yeah, you say your spiel, Audrey. You do. All right. You're so out. As you know, uh, well, next week we will be back. We will not be here on Monday. We will be here only Tuesday to Thursday next week. Um, as a reminder, you can sign up every day by 3 p.m. Eastern, Tuesday to Thursday next week. And I'll send you the link between 3 and 4.30 p.m. And I believe the links will be up on the Public Theater website and HowlRound sometime tomorrow, uh, the new links for next week. Yes. Thanks, folks. See you next Thanks, week. Bye. You're the best. Have a good Bye. week. You're, you guys are the best. Bye. Thanks, Audrey. Bye. Thank you.